All right, so we're gonna start drawing the box. And now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna draw all of the parts in one drawing, in one part studio. I'm going to make sure that they start on new sketches so that they'll be listed as separate parts down here in the parts section. But I'll start here at the front. And we'll start to draw the side that is three by two. So I'm just gonna have it out in open space. I want it three inches by two inches. All right, there is a rectangle. It does not have uh, any finger joints on it, doesn't have any pin joints on it. I'm gonna start putting some finger joints on it. Now I'm gonna start that with a box here. Now you could start at the bottom or you could start at the top, but for reasons that will become apparent later, it'll look nicer if you start at the top for this side. Now I want this to be one eighth of an inch by a quarter of an inch. An eighth of an inch is 0.125, quarter of an inch is 0.25. That's how big uh, I want the little fingers to be. Eighth of an inch because the thickness of this wood is eighth of an inch. And then I want it to be a quarter of an inch all the way down. Now, I had mentioned before about curve multiple times, uh, and I'm gonna need to adjust these values. Uh, the curve is about a 32nd of an inch, uh, and um, works out to about a 64th if, uh, if you divide that by two. So I'm just gonna add a 64th of an inch. Now, uh, a 64th of an inch, oh, come on, go. All right, I'm just gonna type in the new value. Uh, a 64th of an inch is 0 0.015, it is 0. 0.015, that's a 64th of an inch, approximately. When you add that to an eighth of an inch, you get 0.14. I'm gonna have to do it here as well. I'm gonna say 0.265, because that's 0 0.015 added on to a quarter of an inch. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a pattern. I want to make a pattern of those. I can make a pattern with that one too. And it gives me an option of one or three. I'm gonna make that into one here. I'm gonna make this into four here. Is that four or is that three? Oh yeah, that's right, it's three because we start with the one. Three here. And we're gonna have uh, 0.5 inches. These are all going in the wrong direction. Actually, no, I am gonna put four. I want a total of four. I can do this a couple of ways. I can rotate it around so it goes the other direction, or I can just do this, negative 0.5. There we are. Oop. Oop, looks okay. Finish my sketch, I didn't need to finish a sketch. All right, I wanna mirror these to the other side. I could redraw it and re-pattern um, it. That's easier to just do a mirror. So that little box means it's in the center. Let's draw a line. I do mirror, it says select mirror line. Yeah, there, there we go. And let's just go and select all the things so I can see what's appearing. Make sure both sides are in view. Oh, and that managed to grab something it wasn't supposed to. There we go. All right. Escape mirror. Now, because I'm going to be extruding this as well, and you're going to be exporting the 
um, you're going to be exporting the 2D version from here. So if you remember back to when we were doing uh, 2D things, you want to make sure that uh, come on, let's delete. All right, there we go. You want to make sure you don't have extra lines in there. Extra lines are going to turn into extra cuts. And if I have a line here, it's going to cut through and remove all my finger joints. One thing uh, you should know about working with, uh, with woodworking is you do not want to cut off all your fingers. I actually did work with someone who had cut off part of two of his fingers in wood shop. It's not, uh, there's a non-zero chance that you can cut all your fingers off. So let's not cut our little finger joints off. Uh, and there we go, there's some finger joints. Now we're gonna work on the pin joints. Pin joints are gonna work in a similar way, except I want them to fit uh, relatively snugly. So I'm gonna put a rectangle in here. I'm gonna make it the size that I actually want it to be, 0.25. By 0.125. It will actually be slightly larger than this. It'll be about uh, a 64th of an inch larger, uh, maybe a 32nd. But that's enough uh, so that you can actually put the the uh, wood in without it uh, without it complaining too much. Now we need to position it, and we need to position it well, or else. It won't, it won't line up. If it doesn't line up, your parts aren't going to fit together. Uh, as a general rule, you don't want to get this hole anywhere closer than an eighth of an inch in from the edge, uh, or else it, the wood is just, there's just not enough there and you're gonna break it. So I'll do the minimum amount. I will do an eighth of an inch, 0.125. And there we go. Point one two five. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put it on the other side. Again, an eighth of an inch in. And go here. Point one two five, eighth of an inch. Point one two five. Eighth of an inch. There we go. And we're going to need one in the middle because this is a really long gap. The The shorter sides, you're only going to need one, but, uh, or you're going to need two, but uh, the longer sides, let's put three in. So I'm going to switch out to a center point rectangle and try to line it up in the center here. Doop. 0 0.25, 0 0.125. And see how it's totally lined up in the middle? That's a good thing. All right. Now, that is the majority of it. Uh, we've got one last thing to take care of. And it is the... Um, The hinge. Here's how we're going to do the hinge. We're going to do a center point rectangle and two circles. And we're going to be lining these things up a little bit. We're going to line them up later. Whee. I, want, I want the sizes to be the same, so it doesn't really matter just yet. All right. I'm trying to cancel. Let's go with a dimension. Keep on trying to do the commands from a different program. Uh, I'm going to do an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch. Because that's the size of the uh, pin that I'm going to do. Again, it's going to be a little bit smaller than this because of the laser, and this is going to be a little bit larger because of the laser, which will give it a lot of 
clay, so it'll actually be a little bit loose, um, which since there's no bearing in there, you want it to be a little bit loose. Uh, however, this one here, you're gonna wanna make sure you got enough space. I'm gonna do 0.4. So I've got enough wood there to make sure it, uh, um, it survives. Hold on, I'm just gonna go look at something. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. Uh, 0.14. 1, 4. Just gonna make it a little bit larger so that uh, um, this ends up uh, getting a little bit looser. So it's not gonna be the end of the world. All right. So let's uh, go and move these. I'm gonna go and grab them all. I'm gonna go up here to the transform and I'm gonna move it first. I'm gonna move it right here so that the top edge of this wood lines up with the top edge of the side so that when the piece of, uh, the, when the lid is in here, it, uh, it lines up. Go there, and then I'm gonna use a dimension to give the other one. So I'm gonna do a dimension between there and there. I'm gonna do 0.265. Basically, a quarter of an inch in. I'm going to do that to make sure that um, uh, we've got enough space and it's dimensioned because it has to line up to the other piece. Uh, whenever you're connecting between two different pieces, you got to make sure on your dimensions, or else when you try to stick them together, they're not going to stick together. All right, I'm going to trim, trim, me, trim, trim. And at this point, if I was gonna do a design, I would draw it on here. It doesn't have to be extruded when you, when you export this as a DXF. It will uh, export the drawing on there and then I will set it to etch unless you specify otherwise. Um, but frankly, you're gonna want it to set to etch unless you're cutting holes in it. Um, and then, um, yeah, just uh, go from there and let's do this and let's extrude and see what we get. Extruded by an eighth of an inch because that's what it is. Move that one there and let's go look at it in isometric and see what it shows. This looks right. There's the first piece. All right, I will stop recording and I'll start up with the second piece.